This is Texas, a state with immense resources and home to over 24 million people. Texas, like all states, faces challenges that often defy the boundaries of neighborhoods, counties, and cities. To address these challenges, we elect representatives to be our voice at the table when there are decisions to be made. For over 15 years, former Lieutenant Governor Bill Ratliff honorably served as the voice of rural Texans in Senate District 1. My father had his master's degree in history from Columbia. He was a big reader of current events and politics, and our dinner table was always laced with his conversation. He loved to tell Huey P. Long stories. Uh, he didn't admire him particularly, he just thought he was such a character. So I guess it was always a little bit in my blood. After I began practicing engineering, most of my practice was before city councils or public bodies. So I began to make presentations and work closely with all these elected officials. I think I kind of got the bug. And by virtue of all this public exposure, I just got more and more comfortable with speaking on my feet and I really thought that I could do this. East Texas had never elected a Republican to the Texas Senate since Reconstruction. I ran against an incumbent Democrat as a Republican. Even my best friend's telling me, you can't win. I told him that's just what I was going to do. We worked hard, and uh, he shot himself in the foot a couple of times uh, along the way, which probably was the reason I was elected. I didn't pay much attention to what the party said the platform was or what I ought to be doing. I made my own decision. Over the years, they began to realize that I was an ideologue. Before it was over, I was winning my re-election campaigns by 70 percent. The election of Republicans did not occur just in Governor Ratliff's district. It was actually a part of a statewide shift that put Republicans in control of the Texas State Legislature for the first time in 130 years. In light of the shift, the party was authorized to redistrict, which resulted in one of the state's most dramatic political battles. First of all, redistricting is the most agonizing process that the legislature goes through. The one man, one vote ruling says that every citizen ought to have the same level of representation as every other citizen, which means that a district that a congressman or congresswoman represents should have the same number of people in it that another district does. Every 10 years, we do a census and we find out that some districts have grown, some districts have shrunk. The recent battles were all about redistricting for congressional seats. So we have to redraw the lines. Once you start redrawing the lines, you realize that if you draw the line this way, this district will be a Republican district because it'll have 60% Republicans in it. But if you draw it this way, it might be 60% Democrat. And if you draw a whole series of those we can fix it to where 55% of these districts will be Democrat. Or we could fix it where 55% could be Republican. It becomes a huge jigsaw puzzle, and whoever it is that's drawing the puzzle can control how many seats are occupied by Republicans and how many are occupied by Democrats. In early 2003, Governor Ratliff was the only Republican who joined the Democratic state senators in opposing a redistricting proposal that he felt would lead to the underrepresentation of rural voters. In cooperation with 10 Democrats, he signed a letter refusing to bring the matter to the Senate floor, which, due to the rules of the Senate, prevented the proposal from being passed. Tempers boiled over Monday morning when lawmakers delayed a public hearing on redistricting. There's people from all over the state that are spending money and their time to be here. These people work for us. Yeah. And Ross and Senator Gonzalo Barrientos was circulating a letter that would soon become a bombshell. I feel secure at this point that there will be 11, at least. He needed 11 signatures to trigger a blocker bill that would prevent redistricting from reaching the Senate floor. At 1 o'clock, Sarriantos had 10 signatures, all from Democrats. By 4.30, Republican Bill Ratliff became the crucial number 11. We've got Republican members of this Senate who all they want is for this cup to pass from their lips. They don't want to do this, but they feel compelled to go forward with this effort. And I think it's uh, 
somebody has to step forward and say this is that the price is not worth uh, what we're going to put the the results are not worth the price we're going to pay redistricting you are that's me you're talking about whether i get reelected next time or not and whether i continue to serve in the congress or not i truly believe that if i was doing what my conscience told me to do i slept like a baby <laughs> People in Northeast Texas felt that I had done exactly what they wanted me to do. As a matter of fact, at home I was a hero, and the other members of the, of the Senate had no problem with me standing my ground. It was the party mechanism, party workers and party hierarchy that had the problem with me. It's an excruciating process because of all the, all the pressure of the two parties, all the pressure of the members of Congress, all the pressure from people who would like to be members of Congress. You are so intense. You are so pulled in all these directions for so much of the time, even when you're home. People coming by wanting to talk to you about what they needed. You really do begin to burn out. You can't keep the same kind of zeal and, and, and uh, vigor in that job forever. I guess I walked onto that Senate floor a thousand times every session. And every time I walked on that floor, I got such a, an extreme sense of history. You know, the, the hair kind of stands up on the back of my neck. That this is democracy. This is the way it ought to work. I hear all the time, I, I'm not interested in politics. The person that says they're not interested in politics is like a drowning man that says he's not interested in water. What we do here impacts 20 million people every minute of the day, every minute of their life.